Okay, okay. Thank you. Oh, there y'all go. I was waiting for y'all. Y'all tap the screen. Today, we're talking about the blood. We're talking about the meaning of why I come forward to talk to you about eating for your blood type. I understand because I have a mindfulness page that mind trumps all things. But today, I want to uh, give you an approach or aspect from a religious aspect from the Bible. You know, we all, at one point, even if you ain't religious no more you're spiritual one of our lifetimes we embarked on a lifetime where we was a christian or maybe our grandma was a christian or somebody was a christian maybe you're still a christian ain't nothing wrong with being a christian be whatever it is that you want to be the most beautiful beautiful lady is on again thank you i appreciate that so with that being said thank you jamie with that being said hey love hey orange how you doing today with that being said, we're going to go back to the biblical text. We're going to go back to the biblical text because I feel like there's some hidden jewels in there. And I'm not, you know, I'm not part of no religion. I ain't trying to get you to join no church. And I'm definitely not getting you to follow me. I'm just trying to help to open up the mindset for expansion for you to evolve to a higher state of being, a higher Christ consciousness. And whatever Christ consciousness is for you, so shall it be. But if you could have for a moment come outside, come outside of your limited box, the limiting program, you know, the thoughts that you tell yourself every day and you just think that that's law, that's called your box, that's called your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is limited based upon the thoughts that you think all day, every day. But keep this in mind. Your subconscious mind is already all-knowing, tapped into infinite intelligence. So it does know other things. But it tries to kind of like protect you to keep you governed underneath your laws that you set for it. Okay? So in your mind, you may know of the biblical text. You know, you may know of religion. And in religion, they used to tell you... Um, different things about the blood in the bible itself they'll talk about the blood of the lamb they'll talk about you know sacrificial offerings in the biblical text the sacrificial offerings in the biblical text was like that of an animal right right and and oftentimes it'll go over people's head how much the biblical text was about the blood the blood of christ even in 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 church today you know on certain sundays they you know eat the cracker symbolic of the blood of the so-called christ and then they drink the um i mean symbolic of the body of the so-called christ and then they drink the little grape juice symbolic of the blood of the so-called christ right because the blood is supposed to be just this holy thing it's supposed to be magical it's supposed to write everybody's name you know we even have the songs we have the songs that say um oh the blood oh the blood has signed my name and then, and then we have these other songs, nothing but the blood of Jesus, like, right? And so we always reverencing this here blood, even for the Egyptians in an effort for them to be protected. There was a certain um, thing that they had to do. They had to put blood, the blood across the door seal for the people to be protected, whoever was in the house that was covered with the blood. So we got blood, 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 blood mentioned all the while in the biblical text, right? And so... We even when we say our prayer, if we're really deeply rooted in religion, we'll say our prayer and we'll bind the so-called devil and we'll plead the blood of Jesus on the so-called devil because the blood of Jesus go get the devil, like right? Jesus' blood. Never your blood though. It don't it, your blood, I guess, I guess your blood in religion ain't ain't worth nothing. But today I want to let you know that your blood is worth something. It's worth a whole lot. And I want you to know that you were always talking about your blood. It was always your blood. It wasn't other people outside of you blood. Because actually, the biblical text is an allegory story about you. It's about you and your journey of becoming the Christ conscious one. So when we're talking about blood, we're talking about the renewing of yours. Because if you renew it to a certain frequency, you begin to activate your dormant DNA inside of your body. So... <laughs> There are many countless ways that you can renew your blood. It don't have to be through eating certain things. Because, like I said, we are all conscious, Christ conscious ones. So you can consciously, through your ability to focus, meditation, mindfulness, using your human imagination, renew your own blood, activate your own dormant DNA. And the biblical text was really teaching you um, through the story of the Christ conscious one, that the Christ conscious one did it that way through mindfulness, 
the Christ conscious one, if you remember those stories that they were sharing, went on a mount to pray. Meditation, like, right? <laughs> yeah, I think you worked it. Went on a mount to pray, like, right? Constantly said things about, let this mind be in you. He also, there's a parable also in there that teaches you about, um, it's not what man puts inside of his mouth that defiles a man. It's what's coming out of the mouth, right? Love your accent. Thank you, Keith. So <laughs> all of these things in the biblical text is really reminding you or showing you what you can do as a Christ conscious one to activate your dormant DNA, your blood. And so what are the benefits of you activating your dormant DNA or your, your activating your blood? Well, health and wellness is one. <laughs> Another benefit of it is because oftentimes we're trying to manifest certain things. We're trying to manifest certain things that seem unattainable to us, but we could only manifest based upon the frequency that we are. Well, if you activate your dormant DNA and your blood, AKA your lifeline, now you're at a higher frequency. In the biblical text, this is equivalent to you rising to your Christ conscious one, um, say the being. And so they'll talk about the land that is flowing with milk and honey. Surely the land that's flowing with milk and honey is in your head, right? In your head. This is, this is symbolic of you, your crystal fluid secreting throughout your body and allowing you to experience your own high. You know, yesterday it was 420. You know, a lot of people got high off of, you know, the marijuana and stuff. But guess what? You came forth in physical reality when you was a baby. You had this soft um, spot on your head, kundalini activation. There you go. <laughs> you see, a lot of people don't know it as that. And, you know, they might think of it as the devil, so to speak. But I want you to know it's deeper than that. Because when you came forth in the physical reality, y'all tap the screen so we can get some more people up in here. Y'all tap the screen. We have 625 over there, over here. And I want some other people to hear this. Those that um, may be ready one eye open to hear something on the next level in their journey let's get to 1000 over here let's get to 500 over here we have 684 let's get we have 700 over here let's get to 500 over here 163 let's get up a little bit more so some other people could come and hear this message about this year because it's really important for everybody because this is only what everybody's here for they're on a journey becoming a Christ conscious one okay good we had nine okay thank you over here for 1000 we had 261 over here Let's get to 500 right quick, please, so I can continue. Thank you for the 279. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all tap the screen over here on God is Just Be Healthy. Tap the screen over here. Yeah, you, 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 you. I'm talking to you. Could you tap that screen? This is how you tap the screen. Yo, there you go. Thank you so much. You tapping it down. Can we get it? Get it to 300. The number at the top, 300. We had 330, 360. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, 500. We had 300. 400. Okay, a little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. We almost there. Four sixty-one, four seventy-six. We almost there. Four ninety-one. Come on, one, come on, more tap. The bam. Thank you. And so we come forth in the physical reality. I appreciate you giving to me while I give to you. The energy exchange flow, flow. I love flow. So we come forth in the physical reality with a soft spot on our head. Hey, sixty-six. This soft spot is our crystal fluid, and this crystal fluid. You know, everybody, you know, the elders, they, 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 they just think nothing of it. Oh, don't touch the baby right there. That's the soft spot. Be careful with the soft spot. That's all they know about the soft spot. And they know, you know, all they know about that. And just, just rub the baby head. Rub the baby head so it won't be whopped or whatever. But don't, don't, don't touch the soft spot, they say. Well, inside of the soft spot is your crystal fluid. It's, it's, it's this fluid that will stay in your, in your body until you become the Christ conscious one until you activate your dormant DNA. And there's certain ways that you activate it by staying away from alcohol because alcohol works as an astringent to take the larger part of you, AKA your soul away from you. This is why you get drunk in a person looking to a drunken person's eye and they don't look like the same being anymore. They are dehydrated and their larger part from them has been uh, taken away like as an astringent. This is why they're called liquor places spirits you know, spirits. Um, they'll have the word spirit on the little liquor stores or whatever. Anyway, so this, these are ways that you, if you stay in alignment with yourself by eating the right foods, by, um, by staying away from liquor, by abstaining 
on a certain day of the month from sex on that particular day, not every day except abstaining from um, sex, but in a certain cycle where the moon and the star uh, and the sun is in a certain place, and you stay abstain from sex during that time and you practice a vibration of love or higher frequency, well, your dormant DNA or your, your crystal fluid will one day secrete, right? And it will it'll come traveling down your body, kind of like what we're talking about a Jacob's ladder, up the Jacob's ladder. And this is why in the biblical text, they talk about Jacob's ladder. Jacob wrestling with God, and in, 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 in it's called Jacob's ladder. And the place that he wrestled was with pineal, was called pineal or your pineal gland. So it's really everything that's happening inside of you that's going on in this biblical text. So when all of these things are happening, this dormant DNA is activating, this kundalini in, um, energy is rising, what's happening is your old blood, so to speak, your blood is being renewed. And I'll get out of religion and I'll go to a movie that maybe you've seen before on TV. It's a movie called Lucy. Remember the movie Lucy, the white lady, she had some drugs stacked stuffed inside of her by this mafia or these bad guys put some drugs inside of her so she could deliver the drugs they put it inside of her body and the drug package that they put in her body burst right and because the when the drug package burst she was activated it was like little little um it looked like cocaine or whatever but these crystals in her head you'll see it on the movie that it was activating this crystalline side of her right because of the drug and so after it was activated she went from using 10 percent of her brain capacity to 100 all-knowing infinite intelligence and she became like a computer like right and so this is the very thing yeah she became every day and was everywhere all at the same time you remember that movie right so this is the same thing that i'm talking about the ability that you i we stem from all-knowing infinite intelligence not just dumbed down to 10% of brain capacity but oftentimes in our physical reality I don't want to say outside forces because there's no outside force it's only you experience yourself experiencing yourself oftentimes you get to a point where you you ain't ready for yourself you still want to play the game of life yeah yeah you want to still play the game of life so you put stumbling blocks you run away from maybe a lot remember the people that was up here they ain't ready to explore themselves you run away from a lot that tells you these things about your body or your life force, your power within, because you don't be ready for you, right? You'll eat certain foods and you'll be attracted to things that are opposite away from going up and evolving because you want to stay on a certain plane just yet. Because before you came forth in physical form, you <laughs> knew your life, you knew the life you were picking, you knew the moment that you... Um, uh, was gonna wake up. Remember, this here is another quote from the biblical text. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Right. So, anyway, you knew yourself already. You knew what you came for to do. You knew that you were gonna explore yourself. And in exploring yourself, you would remember yourself. You would you would um, remember yourself in different aspects. You would remember where you kind of like left off. And so where you left off, that means where your ancestors, before you left off, where you jumped in and different out, in and out of different avatar bodies. Yeah, you remember that. Just like your blood. <laughs> Just like your blood. I know I'm spelling that wrong. Yeah. Just like your blood has memory. Your subconscious mind has memory. You are the memory. You are the expression of your ancestors. Everything is connected. So now you have this infinite intelligence inside of you, this all-knowing. And this is like your lifeline. Your lifeline is inside of you. And this is why when you ask a question, just not out loud, within your thought. This is why in the biblical text it says, ask and you shall receive. And this is why I believe that in the stumbling block of religion, they teach you not to question God, not to ask. Because if you ask, you come out of the stumbling block of religion and you get to really know yourself on a deeper level because you're asking your subconscious mind a question. And you never ask your subconscious mind a question that you don't already know the answer to because you're God. Whether you sleep God, woke God, it don't matter. Conscious and unconscious, you're still tapped into infinite intelligence and all knowing. You just don't remember when you're not conscious, but you know. You have a feeling of, you have this yearningness to, to know. And you have this, 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 look, I can't, I don't know how to maybe break it down to you. 
and articulate this, but this is something that I know because I feel it on another level because I'm connected to this higher source or my inner being, this higher level of conscious that lets me know that this is law for me, for my super conscious mind. So with all that being said, now we have, we know that we're connected to infinite intelligence and we know that love is the thing that's connecting us all. Well, guess what? In our physical avatar self with our blood, in our body, when we go down to this, this, this loop of, of, of forgetting ourselves, we forget our bloodline. We forget that our blood has memory. Like, right? Even back to the biblical text, they'll tell you, this one um, knew this one. This one this knew this one. This is, they were telling you the bloodlines of how everybody was connected because it meant everything. Right? There was one, I forget who this was, maybe y'all remember this one before he that was he was dying in the biblical text. And he was asking for his son or whoever not to marry into certain bloodlines. Because in that biblical text, it was a display of how important, how magical, how powerful the blood was. Now we fast forward to this point in time where we have people in the physical reality that don't know their blood type. We have the medical industry that don't disclose it. Like we have birth certificates where it ain't even there. And so we have people doing things, <coughs> excuse me, doing things, maybe eating things, and tainting their DNA because they're put consuming things that's not good for their bloodline. <laughs> and they're causing themselves dis-ease and disharmony in the physical reality because they don't remember. Remember, I'm telling you that they're dumbed down to 10% of their brain capacity. So they don't have the intellect to remember that they have a subconscious mind that remembers everything. And on top of that, they have a blood line, a lineage inside of them, the blood that remembers. So being that they're eating everything and anything that they want because, you know, you, they say you only live once. Meanwhile, they've been here for eons and eons doing the same thing the whole life over and over again until they evolve to their Christ conscious state of being. But they think that they only live once. So they're wilding out. They say, oh, I'm going to just die happy. But what has happened to these people is that they, unbeknownst to them, are eating certain things that's kind of affecting their bloodline. And so it ain't nothing wrong with God experiencing itself and God deciding, hey, I'm going to eat some things that's not for my blood type. And causing myself this ease and disharmony but the thing about it is that's 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 the kind of like the little penalty you get you know the ignorance is bliss well you don't know but it, some people in ignorance are really sitting there suffering right and so the penalty of that kind of like is the fact that you get inflamed when you are going against what your blood type is because now the certain foods because your blood have memory of all of the other lifetimes and you ain't gonna forget even if you forget your blood got memory of all these other lifetimes and so now when you eat a certain food or drink a certain thing and it connects with your blood type it creates a chemical reaction either it's going to be a happy reaction or, or the, a reaction that's going to increase your frequency, a reaction that's going to clean up your blood, a reaction that's going to, you know, um, activate your dormant DNA, or is going to create a negative reaction called lectins. That's going to cause inflammation in your body. That's going to cause maybe leaky gut. That's going to cause maybe um, um, ulcers. That's going to cause you pain and disharmony in your physical reality. Because there's only two sides in this physical reality. All of these sides roll up to God because God is all. There's only one God, one faith, one baptism. Conscious people exist and unconscious people exist. Healthy people exist and sick people exist. There must be male people exist and female people exist. White people exist and black people exist. There must be male and there must be female principles. There must be two sides because we're governed underneath the law of polarity. So it's going to be two sides of everything that you decide to put to your mouth. Either it's going to cause you life or it's going to cause you death. But it's going to cost you because we are experiencing ourselves. And God being that it's experiencing itself is just one God, one faith, one baptism. But God is experiencing itself on two different sides. This is why it is so important that you know your blood type. 
This is why, if you want to be healthy, this is why it's so important that you consume foods that's going to activate your dormant DNA. And so when we get to a place in our journey, like I had this lady who was on my live yesterday, and she commented about six times on my videos telling people that they need to look out or study people that's telling them stuff that God didn't say. But I'm reminded of even in the, in the biblical text many times, but church people overlook this kind of thing. In the Old Testament, it teaches you, and I'm going to teach I'm going to break this down because I want you to get what's going on in this biblical text as far as mindfulness and the physical is concerned. In the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, it was telling, in Leviticus, I believe it's about 11 and 7, it was telling you to stay away from pork because of your bloodline, right? because of your bloodline you stay away from pork because of pork being unclean don't even touch it it says in the book of leviticus but people in church they don't want to read that scripture they only want to apply scripture to them in their right now you know the scripture about money oh they, they read that one they read the scripture about you know god gonna give me back everything that the canker worm stole from me but they don't want to abide by the law of the lamb now Interestingly enough, if you eat for your blood type, there is no blood type that it highly benefits from pork. And that coincides with Leviticus 11 and 7, right? We have a little church today because I, I feel like some of y'all need this here. And so <laughs> they even had somebody in the biblical text that went to the Christ conscious one and said, hey, lo, heal me or whatever. You know, in, in so many words, he was saying, but I have not eaten anything that was unclean, right? Letting you know, like at that time, people at that time in that allegory text, however you look at it, whether it, ha whether it happened or didn't happen, however you look at it, but at that season in the allegory story, that eating for your blood type was a thing. You know, right? Marrying within your bloodline was a thing. Sacrificial offerings based upon bloodline was a thing. But right now in the physical reality, a lot of people's blood gets tainted. So we start off with the old bloodline, right? These are gods. This is original blood type, right? So when your blood gets tainted and within time, other races and groups of people come forth in the physical reality. Whether we're talking about genetically modifying these people, you can call it what you want. But they have people that came forth after the gods, after the original O's came forth. Like, right? This is why we have an O blood type. We got A, we got B, we got A, B, right? And so you, you see the negative and the positive on each one of us. And so that's, let, that's letting you know the taintedness of the blood. Because the hierarchy at the top going to be that old negative. And so when you're positive, this is not the positive kind of good positive here when you're looking at the positive. The positive is being that it is that, that blood was tainted. And so how do you get your blood tainted? Your gl blood gets tainted with time by mixing and matching of different um, um, races. And oh no, I'm all positive. It's okay, baby. It's okay. It's not a bad thing. Because we all, look, I'm a, I'm a whole bee. It's not a bad, bad thing. It's just, just letting you know the initial one, the hierarchy of it all was that negative. And so people through time, through, you know, through different acts, you know, mixing and rat, um, matching with races, like slavery, for example, per se, if you believe in that type of thing. By, by us picking an avatar self that in consciously we knew wasn't an O negative, but we came forward and to be it to partake in that particular lineage because we knew what we were signing up for anyway. So it was not, nothing bad. We're only learning and winning here. And so it could also be tainted when we are deciding that we're going to eat things that's going to taint it, that don't, goes against our bloodline, the blood of certain animals. This is why in the biblical text also it tells you don't consume the blood and so for those people that sit there and they'll they'll eat the pork or they'll eat the beef and they like their little bloody steaks they steaks in, in whatever else meat that they, they have blood just secreting all over the place that's they're tainting their blood if they're not in alignment with that blood of that animal like right so our blood becomes tainted and when our blood becomes tainted it hurts us it's caused us dis-ease because we're going against the grain. We're going against the grain of our ancestors before us who were striving and living off of the things that was not causing our blood to taint. So here's the thing. Our ancestors or the ones before us wasn't as sickly as we are now, wasn't as obese as we are now. They were at a higher consciousness. And I ain't talking about your grandma. 
I ain't talking about your grandma who had diabetes and, you know, got, had the gout and had to get, you know, her leg amputated and suffer. No, not that ancestor. I'm talking about the ancestors prior to that. Prior to that, where we're going up to like gods and goddesses, like, right? They ate based upon their blood type. They, they knew if they were O negative, they knew, hey, look, I'm a hunter. I'm eating these vegetables and I'm eating this meat right here. They knew that and they stayed in alignment with themselves because you know what they valued? They valued their consciousness. Their va they valued their awoke state of being. They valued Kundalini in energy. They understood it. They didn't call it the devil. They didn't say it was blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. You would look at them and, and you would see them. They would have the cobra, the head of the cobra on their on the um, Egyptian hieroglyphic pictures and stuff. They were in positions of power. They left it upon walls. They left statues, and they left they left they left all kind of gems and, 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 and seas behind for the ones behind them because they also knew how important not only consciousness was but the blood was, and how important the ones that were behind them knew. They knew, they knew, we call it generational wealth right now as far as leaving money behind. But no, 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 no. They left symbols and walls like they were writing on the walls. This is the law for you. Be governed underneath this here. Don't fall away from this here. These, these, you don't know yourself. You know? So these things, these things were always left. As far as religion or spirituality, whatever you want to call it. As far as symbolism. As far as numerology was concerned, as far as health and wellness, it was always left. But even if you ain't never saw that, even if you never believed in those things, you were left as God with a subconscious mind right here. You came equipped with everything that you needed with your crystals fluid inside of your head, your soft spot inside of your head for the day that you asked yourself why. So the reason why some people are not evolving in their life is because they're sitting up there just, just looking around on sleep mode and they're not even asking themselves a question like why? Why does my body feel like this? But why? Because keep in mind, the subconscious mind knows all things. It remembers all things, but you got to ask it a question. So let's get back into the biblical text here. So we have an Old Testament and a New Testament. We have in church today. Hey, sunflower. <laughs> I'm just getting into the live. The book didn't um, mention negative or positive. Oh, okay. We have a, a, um, a, a Old Testament. And we got a New Testament in the biblical text, right? It's a knowing. You got that right. Good afternoon, my reflection. Hey, how you do hey Isaac, how you doing, my babe? I'm happy to see you here. So we got an Old Testament and we got a New Testament. So let's think about the Old Testament as uh, the old contract right let's think about the old testament as mm, let's think about it as conscious um old testament old contract conscious of what is conscious of what is so okay in the old testament we're conscious of what is and so in the book of the leviticus as it pertains to health and wellness blood types and everything they're talking about look don't eat this certain thing no, don't eat that. That's unclean. Da, 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 da. They talk about the blood over there. They talk about all of these things. And the Christ conscious one, supposed to be, he, he, you know, partaking in these stories over here. It's the old contract, right? <laughs> this is physical, right? So this is how this biblical text is broken up. Physical, old contract, consciousness, conscious of what is. And the Christ conscious one ain't there yet. Let's sum it up right there. And they tell you, don't, don't do this here because of your bloodline. So when the Christ conscious one comes, this is now subconscious. This is now infinite intelligence. This is now, this is now 100% of your brain capacity. This is now the new contract. So I don't want you to be confused here. I'm teaching you the physical, which is the 0.1% by telling teaching you what to do in the physical reality what you're eating yeah because people need that because people need to understand that you still got to get to know that part of the contract you got to get to know that part of your consciousness what conscious of what is that's what you came forth in the physical reality to do to explore yourself and get to know all of yourself old testament self new testament self 
So here we are in the New Testament, not a Christ conscious one who came. So we thought we talking now from subconscious. Conscious, Christ conscious came and he said, you know what? Bless your food. You know what? The greatest commandment of them all is love because love connects you to all. Love is the most powerful form of energy, right? So if you bless your food and then you renew your mind, he kept telling you, they cannot robbery to be equal with God by the renewing of your mind. He kept telling you, it ain't about no more. It ain't about the old contract no more. We done got out of consciousness. We need to get into subconsciousness. So it ain't about what a man put in his mouth no more when you get over here in this New Testament. It's not what goes in the mouth and what comes out of the man that's defiling the man. Because on this side, in subconscious, it's all about thought. It's all about thought. But don't, 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 don't disrespect this side of here because it matters too. And for the sick people who I come forth to help to heal, that's who this message is for. The people who I've come help to heal, I have to teach them consciousness first. Conscious of what it is in the physical. Conscious of the fact that your blood has memory in the physical. Conscious of the fact that you need to ask questions to get yourself over here. And so when you're over here, this equivalent to you rising up Jacob's ladder, this is equivalent to now you are the Christ conscious one. This is equivalent now to you walking on water. You were dead. You were so-called babes in Christ over here. You were the dry bones over here, but over here is, oh, ye dry bone. Hear the word of the Lord. I have caused breath to enter into you and you shall live. So I need you to understand both sides of the Old Testament and the New Testament to understand the totality of you. Because when you put them together, it's God. No matter how you look at it. So you can get over here and be healthy physically by eating the right things. By eating the right things, you can wake up the Christ conscious one. But also by meditation. <laughs> by mindfulness. You can wake up to it too. By the ability to focus and a controlled imagination, because this is here represents subconscious things that you could do. This is the physical things that you could do. Over here, you got your oils. Over here, you got your fruit and your herbs for the healing of the nation. But over here, you just got your heart. Look, 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 I'm blessing my food over here. Y'all kidding this thing here? Over here, I'm just going to bless my food over here. I could get there. We both going to the same place, though. At the end of the day, we both going to the same place. We just taking different paths to get there. Here's my point, though. Here's my point, though. Sick people, it's hard for them to focus. You turn on some Tibetan bowl around a sick person. I've been sick, and they'll probably tell you, turn that shit off. I finally am able to get some rest and you hitting bowls and, and you giving me a headache. Turn it off because that's not in alignment to my frequency right now. I'm on set frequency. I'm in old contract. I ain't renewed my mind yet. I didn't go up no Jacob's ladder. What are you talking about? I ain't activated my dormant DNA just yet. Even in the, in the biblical text, the Christ conscious one would say, before his first miracle, he said, lady, it ain't my season yet. And then he, he performed in that allegory of Texas first miracle, which was symbolic of him renewing or activating his dormant DNA, symbolic of renewing the blood, turning water into wine was the first miracle. To get over there to 100% of brain capacity, then after that, nothing shall by no means harm you because you'd, you'd have figured it out. You'd have figured out your physical and you'd have figured out your spiritual. You'd have figured out your 0.01%. Then you'd have figured out the 99.99999 of all there is. Now you're 100% of brain capacity. <laughs> now you have built a church and the gates of hell cannot compare against it. Now nothing shall by no means harm you. Now you can manifest your wildest dreams. Now you, you offer the sickness frequency. You went to health and wellness and mindfulness. Now you don't care what people are telling you about your crystals because you know, even in the biblical text, that your crystals help you on your journey because guess what? They were something spiritual that helped you stay in alignment or get in higher alignment. So all you've been doing in the physical reality is using your resources. You use your herbs, which know how to stay in alignment. You use the music, which is attuned to a high frequency. You use your ability to focus in your mindfulness, which is subconscious mind tapped into 100% of brain capacity, all knowing. 
<laughs> you use your faith because in Hebrews 11, they said all you had to do was have a little bit of, little bit of faith. The substance of the things that you were hoping for, but the evidence of the things that you were not seeing. You use your resources. You use the fact that, wait a minute, wait a minute, my blood, my blood is magical, it's powerful. So when I'm sick, I need to go and I need to purge my blood. I need to tap back into my, my power. Oh, it was okay for me to be sick because I was God experiencing myself and God wants to know what it feels like to be sick. But it ain't okay for you to be there year after year after year after year. When every organ in your body is shedding and turning over <laughs> and giving you newness, how is it that yours is turning over and giving you more sickness? That means you ain't, you ain't trying to get on the other side of things. You ain't renewing your mind. You ain't renewing your blood. You ain't renewing nothing. You just regurgitate and doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And then you pray and you say, why God me? Help me. No, 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 no. You, your savior. In your conscious state of being, in your physical state of being, you might be looking for God. In your old contract kind of living, you might be looking for God. But you got to come over to the new contract to find yourself. You got to explore yourself in the physical and in the spiritual. Because that's what this all is. You got to go down the portal for yourself because you're the savior that you're looking for. And your blood houses all of the memory from your ancestors and what they did. And when you disrespect, you, you know, the, the, the people, the little readers, they'll, they'll, they know this to be true. The little card shifters and the little crystal ladies on, the, on TikTok, they know this to be true. When you sit there and disrespect <laughs> your ancestors, you feel it. This is no different. You disrespecting your blood. This, is, this, this gives whole new meaning to honor the mother and the father so that days will be long on the earth. How you not go eat right for your blood type, but boldly say you honor. You ain't honoring nothing. You ain't even honoring the blood that came before, that was before you. The, the lineage, <laughs> the, the legacy, the memory. You're not honoring it when you defile your own body and you cause your own body this ease and disharmony. And you, then you sit there and you say, God, I never, never said that. What, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean? Life has showed you that. But we go against our own grain. So ain't nothing wrong with going against the grain of yourself. But know that you're doing that to yourself because life is happening to you, not to you. Know that it ain't them doctors' fault. It ain't the FDC uh, and the FBI and all these people fault and the white people fault and whoever else fault. It's your fault. For the lack of knowledge. It's your fault for getting not, not getting to know yourself. But, it, but outside of a fault here, it's you being your own stumbling block because you ain't ready to wake yourself up. You, at the, at the core of it, most often than not, you be afraid of your own power. Because some, some of the people that's listening to me right now, they're probably like, wait, wait, hold up. She was talking about eating for the blood type. I'm just here for the diet. Wait a minute. I don't open up nothing. Uh -uh, they might have stuff up in there. See, see, we be our own some of the blood. Ain't nothing going to be in there. At least you put it inside of there. Your fears. Your hurt. Your shame. Your guilt. Oh yeah, that's in there. But that's the very thing that's stopping you from getting to the new contract that I was talking about. Subconscious mind, all knowing, tapping into your power. Because that's what this life is all about. Learning you. Learning about the peace within you. And you can't, one can't say I'm peaceful, but be inflamed at the same darn time because they don't go hand in hand. Certain fools have you inflamed in your physical reality, and you say, well, I'm gonna die happy. How could that be happy for you? Happy is a different frequency from sick and inflammation. Sick and inflammation equals acid. You're happy that your own fire? Come on now, 
Quit, quit playing with yourself. You happy while you sick? Come on now. The biblical text says, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. The biblical text will tell you, I read you how to a cold because if you look won't well, I spit you out. We have a little church today as it applies to your blood. Just for the church people that come through and then they, they, they tell me that God ain't never said that. Church folk, y'all need to quit, quit blaming, blaming the devil on everything. Y'all also, and this is respectfully because my mama's still in the ministry and her little people come home a lot too. Respectfully, y'all need to really, really stop letting pastor and every church tell you what that biblical text is saying. Reading it to you and, and quoting it to you and interpreting it for you. Because that's stopping you from asking your questions. Why? And you need to know why, but you don't need to know the why that comes from pastor. You need to know why that comes from your subconscious mind. So, for example, if you were reading and you, instead of letting pastor read the book to you, if you was reading the word and it said something up in there, that you didn't kind of understand while you were reading in your habitual thinking, you'd be like, oh, I wonder why. Ding, 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 ding. And that's the kind of thing you got to do to open up the portal of your subconscious mind. Wonder why. And when you wonder why, being that you ask a question, why, being that asking you shall receive, you going to get your answer as to why. Because your why unfolds for you based upon you asking it. But if you just let somebody else teach you, you just sitting up there, yeah, Pastor, Pastor has said, Pastor, well, Pastor has said, well, I guess we got to do that because Pastor has said, and nobody around you, including yourself, is ever asking why you ain't going to never get your answer. Because your subconscious mind has to ask the question. Well, you have to ask your subconscious mind the question. And it being that it knows everything going to give you the answer. Equivalent to ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door shall be open. For him that seek it shall find it. And him that's asking, it shall be answered. But you ain't seeking. You ain't asking. You blaming the devil. You coming on my life and telling me that God never said that to you and that people should study me. No, no. How can one study me when you don't know yourself yet? How I want you to study you first. Then you could study me if you won't do. You ain't going to be studying nothing but a little bird watching retired lady that manifested the life that she desires that just like to help other people. I'll save you some time. That, because that's, that's just, I could only give you what's inside of me. You ain't going to be studying nothing but somebody that's tapped into their brain capacity. And that wants and that desires other people to tap into theirs. That want to leave a legacy behind. You ain't going to learn nothing about me but the fact that I used to always be sick. I spent a lot of time in the old contract that I'm telling you about. But I wasn't asking. I wasn't asking. I was crying. I was a victim. And I'm teaching you how to be, not to be a victim mindset. Be victimless. Be a master manifester. Not a creator by default. No, a conscious creator. Because your blood has a power to do this. It is so magical and it can do this for you based upon your eating habits. Then we go tap into your mindfulness, your subconscious mind. It has the power to do it too. So you have more than one way to wake yourself up. You have more than one way to heal yourself. But oftentimes, like I said in the beginning of this video, you don't want to come out of your limited box or your limited way of seeing life. That's what it is. That's the true stumbling block, you. When you find the person that has been stopping you all of these years, you're going to turn and look in the mirror and you're going to see your face. It's your face. Ain't nobody else's face but yours. So that's my spiel for today. That's my, 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 my church moment for today. And then if you still in church, I encourage you to rightly divide that word of truth because that story is about you, baby. Your story about you becoming in that Old Testament <laughs> to that New Testament 
is equivalent to you being crucified. Crucified by your own self, though. Crucified by your own self because you didn't seek, seek knowledge. The fool, in the biblical text, the fool despise wisdom and knowledge. That's what it says. So from you being resurrected until you being born again, <laughs> you still God. But a lot of you ones that are um, um, crucified, I'm sorry, from you being crucified to you being resurrected, that's still God. But a lot of you that are sitting up there crucified because you in your crucified state of being, you want to come and try to crucify other people that are already rose. And to you, I say, forgive them. Forgive them. For they know not what they do. And see, so when you become conscious and you, you understand more about yourself, you could understand other people. You could understand all them parables in that biblical text and why the Christ conscious one would use the parables so much. Because, you know, in, in, in layman's terms, it's like the parables were in the biblical text because... Look, I'm not, I'm not coming down, so to speak. Christ consciousness was all about alignment. I'm not coming down, so to speak, and speak your language. No. I'm going to give it to you in this parable. And so you're going to think you know what I'm talking about when you're on your low frequency, when you're on your ascetic frequency, but you have ears down there, but you ain't even hearing me just yet. Not until you open up your mind, open up your subconscious mind to, to more of your brain capacity will you really get this thing, will you really understand what the parables was really saying. And all the while you'll be, you'll be, you'll be rereading it over, getting another thought about it. But until you increase your frequency, will you really understand, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Will you really understand what it means when they say, they did not robbery to be equal with God. You wouldn't call it blasphemy at that point when you really understand what, what, what you're talking about there. Life is in the blood. You write about that, Karut. There's power in the blood. How dare you go to church? How dare you go to church and sing nothing but the blood of Jesus and go home and taint your own? How dare you go up in there and, and, and pray on your knees and cast the blood of Jesus. Who you've never seen. You just read about in a book. And you just started believing. Only believe. But yet you have blood pulsating through your body every day. And you want to disregard it. What about your blood? Your blood ain't got no power. What, what's, what's wrong with your blood? It ain't write your name yet. What, what, what's wrong with your blood? Well, you can't just stand up and say, I am that I am. Even in the Christ conscious in the uh, parables, he said, tell him I am sent you. He didn't say, tell him Jesus with his blood and his angels and this one and that and the third. No, he said, tell him I am sent you because I am that I am. You remember that part? You remember the part when they said, <laughs> Isn't it written that ye are gods? No, you, you don't want to remember it like that. You want to remember it and regurgitate it that you're the little cheap kind of God. You, you feel better. It's almost like we have trauma in church. We, we come from church, but we, it's our trauma church days that we, 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 were, we were expanding on. Because it's equivalent to somebody telling you, you ain't shit. You ain't going to be shit. Your daddy wasn't shit, and so shall it be. You remember that kind of trauma? Some people have that kind of trauma. And so in religion, when 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 the people sit there and be like, no, I'm no, no, none is none is righteous but him. No, 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 I'm just a little G kind of God. No, don't uh, what you mean? Well, you must mean little G. No, because I'm just a soldier. I'm just a sinner. I'm just a wretch undone. It's almost equivalent to your saying to yourself, I ain't shit, cause my mama wasn't shit, and I ain't never gonna be shit. You, 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 you get this here? Empower yourself, because you're the I am. Believe you are the I am. Believe 
that your blood is magical because it is. Believe that you are part of the all because you are. Believe that there is infinite intelligence inside of here because it is. And it is my promise to you, you ain't going to the imaginary hell. Because really the true hell is when you have a helmet on your head and you refuse to take it off. And explore the boundless universe, that's the hell. That's the weeping and the gnashing of, and the gnashing of teeth that you're going to experience within yourself. Because your physical body, after you time out in this, in this reality, will be no more. So how is your physical body going to burn? You mean to tell me you think your soul going to burn in a fire? Baby, you, you create the fire in your mind. And so oftentimes when we, when we create this resistance in our body and we go against the grain of what, what, what was programmed in our blood, programmed for our mindset, then we create this ease and we end up experiencing hell in the matrix on earth. Oh, that gotta be hell when you on fire. That gotta be hell when you don't realize that your blood can sign your own name. That gotta be hell when you separate yourself so far away from source that you think that you ain't tapped in no more, that you sitting up there depressed from your source. Stressed from your source and you wondering, where is God? Oh, that gotta be hell for you to not know that you are God. Because I'm reminded of in the biblical text, the fool has said in their heart that there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable things. There is none that do it good. It's an abomination to sin against you because the real sin, baby, when we get down to the real sin, is when you sin against your own self. When you sitting up there sacrificing your own self, your own body, that's the real sin. When you have a internal GP as an inner being that you done separated yourself from and you don't even know that you got it. It's like your life's line. It's the part of you that you left in the non-physical side. But you decided to come forth in the physical as only being a 0 0.01, but it is that 99.999 goodness side of you that you done separated yourself from. That's the real sin when you don't realize you have that because now you experience disease. Now you experience disharmony. Now you looking for God. <laughs> but you don't know that that 99.999% of you is God. We, it is a season for we, not just me, it is a season for us to rise. And if you're not part of the us, if I am not, if I don't resonate with you, baby, get off my page. Stay away from me. If you don't trust me, you don't like me. I ain't here for everybody. I, I, and whatever your inner being feel like, and if it don't feel good, get up out of here. Hey, V, get up out of here. I cast you away. Because I'm not here for you anyway. I'm not here to just debate and all of this and that dirt. I'm here from a place of knowing and leaving a legacy behind. Because I understand that what I leave behind, it'll be just like my ancestors did, leaving the nuggets behind for the ones behind me, for the ones that ask a question why. But if you don't want to ask a question and you want to be ascetic and you want to be a sick and you want to blame everything on the devil and you want to be the victim, it ain't your time to wake up, no way. So go back night night. How about you go back night night? It ain't your season. It's night night time for you. The system is crumbling. Hey, Shadow. Thank you, thank you, thank y'all for listening for my um for my rant. <laughs> to my rant, rather. That was just on my mind, on my heart. And I really wanted to share 
those nuggets from religion because we often forget that part in our journey. And we think we're here, sometimes we think we're here for a job, we think we're here for a man, we think we're here for other people. No, you're here to remember who you are. You're here to find that inner peace within you. And that inner peace comes when you begin to understand and know yourself. Because guess what? Love is understanding. And when you can walk in the understanding and the knowing of yourself, you're not walking ever alone. Because then you have a whole gang of ancestors. People be telling me, oh, I love the way you talk. Oh, where you're from, this and that and other. Oh, who are you in the physical reality and even on here? But what they are saying, what they don't know that they're saying and seeing and experiencing is because I'm tapped in. Because I know who I am. I represent all of the ones before me that knew who they were too. And so they standing right there. They're in my blood. <laughs> Their presence is here on this live. They're in my voice. They're in my dreams. They walk with me. They talk with me. They guide me because I got a gang of them with me. Protected me everywhere I go. And even when my physical body times out and death comes to me in this matrix, from this matrix, nobody will be and took my life. From me, it'll be me laying it down. Just like the ones before me. And just like they laid it down, they have the power to pick that thing back up again when they want to. When they want to come in this simulated environment and play the game of life. This is why you, you be careful out there now. You might be entertaining an angel unaware. You might be telling an angel, oh, she's a devil. Oh, she a witch. Be careful with that day now. See, see, when you become conscious, this, this biblical text is a whole bunch of gems. And they apply to your life. Because you finally studied it for yourself. And when you study, you show yourself approved. Yourself. You ain't studying for other people. You studying for yourself. So these are the things now that you will know about yourself. Not because I told you about yourself. When you get crucified on the cross, it'll be your cross. The skull of your cross. Your Abdullah Ablam Gala in the back of your head. Yeah, that's, that, that's your crucifixion. But lo and behold, there'll be one day when you will experience the Jacob ladder equivalent to your kundalini rising up the base of your spine. And secreting to you the knowledge, the 100% of brain capacity. The dimethyltryptamine and you will need no April 20th day to celebrate it. Because it will flow in you every day, symbolic of the land flowing with milk and honey within you. See, this is the Bible ain't nothing about out there. It's about what's happening inside of your body, within you. Because you have kundalini energy within you. You are the Christ conscious one within you. Your blood should be activating your dormant DNA within you. Your blood should be writing your name. Nobody else. You. You should be saving you. You should be anointing you with oil. Your cup should be running over with the oil that's secreting within you. I ain't talking about the oil that's on the highly beneficial food list. No, I'm talking about the oil that you naturally secrete within you. That has the ability to cleanse and heal your body and activate your dormant DNA to get you to the place where you vibrate in frequency a frequency of 144,000 because all of your chakra pools of energy are open up. You are in alignment and they equal 144,000. And it ain't because of religion. It's because of a frequency that you've attuned your body to because you are the I am that I am. <laughs> but it's nothing but your blood that's going to do you that. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood has signed my name. They'll give you a whole new meaning. Can't you see? Can't you see? Can't you see what the blood has done? And this is why in the biblical text, people would change their name. Oh, no, I ain't that old person no more. 
I'm not familiar with that crucified person no more. This is why spiritually in the spiritual kingdom in community, people will change their name. I too, I changed my name. So some people, some people that maybe grew up with me, they know darn well that I ain't the same person that I used to be. Because see, when you have a spiritual encounter like this, when your dormant DNA activates like this, when you have a real, real juicy experience with source energy, you are not the same no more. So the people that used to hang out with you, they'll come in your life and be like, what is, what is she doing? No, that ain't, what is she doing? That ain't the person that I knew. Wait, did she call herself something different now? Because, oh, 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 they don't get the concept of it. It ain't for them to get, though. It ain't their season for them to get, though. The blood done signed her name. <laughs> so they, they're witnessing what the blood has done now. No more I, but the Christ conscious that lives inside. The I am. The I am nothing, but that I am that's everything all at the same time. So I'm here for a greater cause, y'all. But I'm helping on the physical aspect because I, I desire the people that hear my voice to go down that narrow path that leads to eternal life. That leads to eternal life within. That will lead to your body lighting up. That lead you looking through your first eye. Instead of paying attention to the physical, which is only 1.1% 1, 0 .1 of all that there is. That allow you to have that single eye. You know, because if your eye be single, then your whole body is full of light. Yeah, that I. That's what I'm really here for. And every now and then, I got to remind you all that I'm here for that. <laughs> I got to remind you all that I ain't just here paying attention to no food, no physical. No, we're we going to wake up some dormant DNA up in here because I know you, God. And even though you don't know just yet that you are, I know. I know because I went down the portals. And then I concluded that all of us are expressions of God. Now you could downplay your Godship if you want to because you probably done got off the throne and you probably so animalistic in behavior and your blood has been so tainted. But just by you hearing my voice, you open up a pathway for my voice to be included in your knowledge of your subconscious mind that knows everything, that don't forget nothing. And so you'll come back to this knowing one day you'll remember for yourself. you ask one day. And I'm, my thoughts, of the thoughts of the things that I said today, going to come back to you like, ah. And that's all I wanted from this life. To get your undivided attention to the fact that you're God. And don't you ever forget it. Don't you ever sleep on it no more. Now that you know you can't go back. <laughs> yeah. I once resonated at a frequency like that. But I fell due to ignorance. And I almost learned. Yeah, well, it's relearning. It's just relearning. It's okay. It's okay to take breaks in the journey. Because we've been doing this for eons anyway. But it's relearning yourself. It's getting to know yourself all over again. It's taking a break here and there because it might be overwhelming. It might be a lot of information. But knowing that you can pick up wherever, whenever. I'm definitely very tired. <laughs> what you tired of over there? Let me see. Uh, you are so welcome, Sam. Wake up, everybody. No more sleeping. I like that song now. Yeah. <laughs> no more sleeping in bed. Amen. Thank y'all for being here. Oh, my God. This is so deep. Amen. Amen to that. Yeah. So, <laughs> now that I'm finished preaching, who we got up in here? Y'all want to talk about eating for the blood type? Activated some of that ancestral blood, that dormant DNA, that life force, that footprint to the, uh, your DNA and all that there is. Who we got up in here? We got some O's, we got some A's, A, B's, B's.
What we got up in here? <laughs> what y'all want to talk about? What we'll be talking about today, y'all? Any questions? How y'all doing with y'all meal plan? <sighs> hey, great I didn't know you was up in here. So before we get to that next level, I want you to know we got oh we got bees, we got ibbies, oh and eggs. Everybody up in here looks like it. Everybody up in here. <laughs> um, before we get started, for those of you who do not know, I help people with their health and wellness. And on um, my website, link in my bio, I offer a meal plan, highly beneficial foods for your blood type. But first of all, you need to know what your blood type is. And in getting to know that, you should go to Amazon and enter Eldon, E-L-D-O-N, Eldon at Home Blood Kit. And so you get your blood kit. I was making sure my little thing goes. You get your blood kit and it'll tell you within minutes in the privacy of your home what your blood is. These people already know. They, they, they ready to hear some different things about their blood. And so um, you get your blood kit, you know your blood type, and then on my website, link in bio, you can, this is my bio. When I say bio, that means you click on my picture at the top and you go to this here main bio of me. And on it, you'll see my website there. My website address, if you don't want to go there, is www.saltoftheearthpub.org. Salt of the earth because you are the salt of the earth pub p-u-b dot o-r-g and when you get there it looks like this here at the very top of the screen there is some bold black letters that are jumping up and down right there that you would click on i put it at the top of the screen when you click on that i'm talking about this image this image is for the seven day meal plan for your blood type your blood type it will give you the list of highly beneficial foods for your blood type it will give you the list of foods that you should be avoiding because they're going to cause inflammation to your blood type it will also give you a at home potion that you can consume if you're sick that will activate your body and heal your body based upon your blood type so when you get to it you choose an option of what of your blood type right there this is how you do it choose your blood type you choose your blood type and then you hit add to cart in pink you see that button i chose blood type b because i'm a b and at the bottom i put i'm supposed to hit add to cart to move forward you put it in your cart and you make sure that you put the right email upon check up uh, check out because it's going to be downloaded to you right instantly downloaded now you have all the um categories of foods that are highly beneficial that are activate your blood these are going to be meats well if you're a you won't have no highly beneficial meats but you do have seafoods so for everybody else it'll be meats and then they have the seafood for everybody they have the dairy they have the grains they have the beans the legumes the nuts the fruits the vegetables the beverages the condiments everything for your blood type on that food list that you could be consuming that are highly beneficial for you, that'll help you with inflammation, autoimmune diseases, sickness and harmony, depression, you name it. When you eat for your blood type, it heals your body from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Keep on doing it and you're gonna keep on getting more mental clarity, more energy, more of a life force. All of your ailments will be gone. You'll be reversing the aging process You'll be living longer, healthier lives, and you'll really be happy. Like the people be saying, I'm going to um eat what I want and die happy. No, no, you really be happy. You'll be happy. You'll be vibrant. You'll still have your strength and energy to bend over. You know how the people be on TikTok bending and cracking and all of that and hurting? Mm -mm. That won't be you. Man, y'all, today I'm drinking rose tea rose tea it is so good it's not last night was my first time trying it it is so good y'all probably saw it let me show y'all y'all know i like to show y'all stuff Ugh. i got this from my little international market actually it's it's what i put in my product 
you know, look, I'm eating stuff in my product. So that lets you know my, my stuff good because I'm eating the stuff that I put in there. Let me show you one of my products that I made. It's a, um, it's a growth oil for women. I made one for men too. But it's a growth oil called Be Longer for women. So it's with rose um, mary oil and it helps you grow your edges back and everything right there. I made that. But you see at the top of it? At the top of it, they got little rose petals in there. Because it was so cute. I thought it was so cute, right? But actually, I, I made tea out of those same rose petals. So they look like this here. Look at this here. Look how pretty. I think they're so pretty. And so it's a tea. Look. It's a rose tea. See that? That's so pretty. And so, I'm drinking rose tea this morning. Rose, I'm telling you that because love, love connects us to all things. Rose, rose is, is a love frequency, like, right? So I'm drinking a cup of love this morning. Let me see. Okay. I have been using your alchemist oil diluted with extra virgin olive oil for about a week. Powerful. Oh, yeah. Thank you for commenting. 